Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations. Now like so many, over the years I have taken a ton of photos and I didn't want to fall into the trap like so many others do and just have them on our computer or on our camera or on our phones. I wanted to bring them to life. So today I'm going to show you how I made three different frames. We didn't use any plexiglass or glass and we're going to use resin to bring the photos really to life. Let me show you how I did it. I have a lot of information here to unpack so let's get started. My first step was to cut a 6mm piece of MDF to the size of my photo and then I could use this throughout my project to make sure things were fitting correctly. My prints are 8x12 but you can do any size you like. Now while I'm cutting my MDF to size I'll let you know that I'll put some timings down below in the description so that if you're looking for a particular frame you can skip ahead. The first frame I'm going to tackle is the plywood frame. For this frame I'm using 30mm thick plywood and the first thing I did was to cross cut this with my circular saw using a straight edge so it was more manageable at the table saw. I then ripped the plywood in half and then I could cross cut them on the miter saw. I left the pieces a little oversized at this point so I could dial the fit in at a later step. Heading back to the table saw, I set my blade to 45 degrees and I made my first cut. Once I had one size cut, I could then use my MDF template to set the fence to the right place to cut the other side. Once I had completed the long size, I could then repeat the same process for the shorter sides. Now if I was doing this again, I would set my blade a little lower and complete the cuts in two passes. This would help cut down on burning that I got and also help with sanding later on. I could then sand everything up to 220 grit. This frame was by far the most simplest and very quick and easy to make. I used spray adhesive to attach the photos to the timber and then it was time for the really fun part and resining in the photos. Now I'll run over what you need for the resining and this will apply to all the frames. The things you will need are resin, today I'm using Barnes epoxy glass, a butane torch, disposable gloves, paddle pop sticks and plastic cups. Now you want to make sure you have everything you need before you start. Once your resin is mixed, depending on your resin, you'll have about 30 to 40 minutes work time. I followed the mixing instructions of the resin that I was using, mine was 1 to 1 ratio, and as per the resin calculator online, I needed 80 mils total resin, so 40 mils of part A and 40 mils of part B. I measured part A and part B out into two cups. I could then pour part B into part A and start mixing. You want to mix for a couple of minutes. Once I had been mixing for a while, I then poured the mixture back into the other cup and continued mixing for another couple of minutes. Now a couple of tips while I'm mixing. You want to be careful and make sure that you don't get any resin on your skin and keep in mind resin sticks to everything and it doesn't really come off. So you'll notice when I'm pouring I'm using a resin pit that I quickly knocked up out of MDF to keep everything contained and off the floor. You want a level surface so as the resin is setting it's not pooling or sliding in one direction and you want your workpiece to be raised up off the ground. I made sure I always had two pairs of gloves on at all times. Throughout you will need to change gloves and I found it handy to take off one pair and then put on another always having a base pair of gloves on. You also want to make sure that the space you are pouring in is dust free and not too hot or not too cold. Once your pour is finished it is best to leave it in place for 24 hours so that it can set and then set aside for 7 days to harden. Once the resin was mixed to clear it was then time to pour. I poured the resin in the middle of the photo and then tilted the photo moving the resin around to ensure the whole photo and sides were covered. You can also use a paddle pop stick to spread the resin if you like. You'll find that the resin will typically self level. Once I was happy I left it in place for 24 hours to set. After 7 days I could take the frames back to the workshop and clean up the back. You'll find bubbles of resin that have pulled on the back side of the frame. This just has to be sanded away with 80 grit sandpaper. It was then time to put some hanging hardware on the back and we can call this frame done. Alright, let's move on to the white frame. I started this frame with cutting 15mm plywood strips that are 50mm wide. Now I was making a number of frames so I cut a whole bunch of strips. The next step was to cut a rabbit into the strips and I used the table saw for this. 
I set my fence and lowered my blade and then made the first pass. I could then push the fence over a little and make a second pass to finish the rabbit. When it came to cutting the MDF backing piece, I made sure that I allowed for the photo size plus the width of the rabbit. I took my MDF piece and put it into the first piece of plywood and marked where I needed to cut. I then used my miter saw to make all the cuts and made my way around the board. It was then time to glue up the frame. I used my favourite clamping method, good old blue tape. With the frame glued up, I could then glue in the backing piece and set aside to dry. Now I needed to reinforce the mitres, so I decided to go with dowels instead of splines. I used a 6mm drill bit and drilled from the bottom and the top, making sure that I drilled through the two pieces. I glued in the 6mm dowel and flush cut with a handsaw. With the frames all sanded, I decided to paint the front of the frame, so I applied undercoat and two coats of white sanding in between. I again used spray adhesive to stick the photos in and I could start to resin them in. Once you have everything covered, you can then use the butane torch to lightly torch the resin to remove any of the air bubbles. Now when using the torch, I made sure to not hover in one area for too long, otherwise the photo will start to melt. So I found quick passes and at a distance worked best. After seven days, I came back and cleaned up the back by sanding. I could then put some hanging harbour on the back and we are done. The final frame for today is an oak frame. I had some left over from a tabletop. I cleaned up the sticks that I had and I cut them down to 30mm square. I lowered the blade down to about 10mm and cut a dado through the middle of the oak. After one pass, I moved the fence over a little and made a second pass and checking along the way that the piece of MDF fit. Again, when I was cutting the MDF backing to size, I made sure to take into account the depth of the dado and the size of the photo. I used the MDF to size each of the pieces of the oak and cut the mitres on the miter saw working my way around the frame. With all my pieces cut, I could then glue up my frame using a band clamp, making sure checking for square as I was tightening the clamp up. I sanded everything up to 220 grit and I used a satin clear spray to finish the oak. Once I spray adhesive the photos in, I could once again apply the resin. With the hanging hardware on the back, I could call this frame complete. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to hit those subscribe and like buttons below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.